New Jersey, truly an iconic Northeastern US state known for its bustling metropolises and its proximity to New York, while at the same time defined by its green, tranquil forests. It was one of the original 13 colonies and is home to many of America's historic townships. Coincidentally, it is also the birthplace of a monster. Along the coast exists one of the last remaining Atlantic pine forests, famously known as the Pine Barrens. Supposedly dating back to prehistoric times, this primeval woodland spans more than one million square acres, stretching across seven different counties. Characterized mostly by dense forest, the Pine Barrens also contains large swaths of bog and marshland, a natural attribute that formed the basis of local colonial industries, such as the production of tar and bog iron. Certainly an appropriate setting for a story that dates back to the 1700s. The year is 1735. A local woman of the name Jane Leeds is preparing for the birth of her 13th child. Woefully tired of so many pregnancies and responsibility for so many children, out of pure frustration, Leeds curses her 13th child, declaring that it shall be the devil. While those surrounding Leeds through the final days of her pregnancy casually dismissed such a seemingly ridiculous declaration, they went on to prepare for a normal birth. With the night of the birth upon them, Jane Leeds lie in bed in labor, being comforted by family and friends alongside a local doctor and midwife. While everything seemed normal at first, Leeds soon began to bleed, with a puddle of red blood pooling on the floor. Upon closer inspection, the doctor noticed that the blood on the floor was turning darker, reminiscent of a black, tar-like substance. A few moments later, Leeds was said to retch violently several times. By some accounts, she even appeared to levitate briefly over the bed. Still bleeding, now almost uncontrollably, Leeds was able to continue to push, with the doctor from under the sheets just a few minutes later, producing a tiny but unrecognizable baby. As the midwife proceeded to clean the baby, using a bucket of spring water. The water would reveal a horror unlike anyone in the room that night had ever seen. This was no ordinary child. By all accounts, it was anything but human. Agitated, the creature leapt from the midwife's hands, struck the doctor with what appeared to be a blunt spear on the end of its tail, and landed near the grave of the fireplace. With a glass-shattering shriek, the creature disappeared up the chimney and vanished into the night. No one knew what became of the 13th Leeds child, but perhaps it was no coincidence that soon after its birth, strange stories began to circulate among residents of the Pine Barrens. Sightings of a horrific, unrecognizable creature in the towns around the Pine Barrens dominated conversations between concerned citizens. Many of the accounts were the same, descriptive of a fast-moving creature hurling through the air emitting a high-pitched, horrible scream. And through close association with the Leeds family and the story of the infamous 13th child, it wasn't long before the creature was spoken of as the Leeds devil. While the story of the Leeds Devil had not yet reached beyond the confines of the Pine Barrens, one notable encounter would soon attract much broader attention. Renowned Revolutionary War hero Commodore Stephen Decatur was visiting Hanover on official business commissioning cannonballs to be made for one of his warships. One evening at the cannonball factory, the official, along with several others, heard a piercing shriek from over the horizon. As the jarring noise grew louder, 
Off in the distance, the general witnessed an oddly shaped flying object moving far faster than any conventional bird. The group watched in horror as the terrifying creature dipped in and out of view. Panicked, the Commodore ordered an immediate test fire of one of his newly manufactured cannonballs. The cannonball was fired, yielding a direct hit on the strange creature with little effect. While the creature did screech, it maintained flight and flew off over the horizon. Shaken, the Commodore was quick to share his account of the incident with the public. Soon after, the now infamous Leeds Devil would make yet another high-profile appearance. Joseph Bonaparte, the elder brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, had sought exile in New Jersey. One night, while out hunting on his estate, he noticed a rather large, strange-looking object flying over a forested area adjacent to his property. Much like other encounters, Bonaparte described a loud, piercing shriek echoing off in the distance. While the incident was brief, it would prompt Bonaparte to share about his encounter, further amplifying local curiosity. The legend of the Leeds Devil, born out of the 1700s, would be carried on and shared for centuries, and strange occurrences in the area would often be attributed to the fabled creature. Farmers would report livestock missing, Hunters would find bizarre hoof prints in the snow. Deer would be found oddly mutilated. Fast forward to the year 1909. While the legend of the Leeds Devil had maintained a narrative in the backdrop of local culture, a rash of sightings would once again launch the famous beast onto the front page of newspapers throughout the region. In a single week in January 1909, Hundreds of sightings were reported. Officially sanctioned hunting parties searched for the beast. One account even claimed that the creature attacked a trolley car, and local authorities offered a $10,000 reward for the devil's capture. By now, the creature's description had become more comprehensive than it had been in years prior. Witnesses described the devil as a hooved creature that walks on two legs and flies on enormous bat-like wings. It has blood-red eyes, horns, and a forked tail. Some describe its head as being oversized and similar in shape to that of a horse or kangaroo. Its cry was consistently described as a high-pitched, piercing shriek. A renewed local fascination with the creature prompted by the rash of sightings in 1909, would prompt an evolution of the legend, with new details of the story and even new exaggerations. Perhaps most notably, the beast, once known as the Leeds Devil, would now be more broadly known as the Jersey Devil. Following the rash of sightings in 1909 and associated reaction, Experts were quick to decry the stories that were circulating among residents in the Pine Barrens. Medical sociologist Robert E. Bartholomew diagnosed the week-long episode as an outbreak of mass hysteria. Others dismissed the stories while pointing out that the area coincidentally harbors an abundance of similar local legends. Among the most notable are the ghostly white stag, bar guests, ghost girls, and the phantom of the famed Corsair, Captain Kidd. But after the cluster of sightings in 1909, it wasn't long before the story of the Jersey Devil retreated into the backdrop of local legend. In modern times, the famed Jersey Devil and the tenants of its historic legacy make headlines. In 2008, a strange animal corpse, said to be that of the Jersey Devil, was photographed in nearby Montauk, New York. While some were quick to claim that the creature's strange body indeed belonged to the Jersey Devil, others disputed this, noting that the body did not match any typical description of the legendary creature. Today, the Jersey Devil continues to elude the public and tease our collective imagination. The mystery surrounding this ominous creature 
attracts thousands of tourists annually to the area, where businesses have harnessed the story to drive the local economy. But what is the Jersey Devil exactly? Surely a creature with such an unusual identity possesses a unique origin. Given the prehistoric nature of the Pine Barrens, perhaps the devil is the descendant of an ancient animal, yet undiscovered. Or perhaps there's a more historical explanation. During its early history, the Pine Barrens were a hotbed of illegal activity. Native tribes and loyalist bandits used the forest as a hideout. Maybe the legend was born out of their desire to evade potential captors. I guess there's always the possibility that Jane Lee's curse really did take hold. Of course, there's no way to prove that yet. So for now, all we have are legends and the devoted efforts of those who believe in this fantastic beast. My friends, until the next sighting. My name is Scott. And thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, monsters, or legendary creatures doesn't matter here. Just believe in the possibility. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.